I don't have my phone. I think I left it in the couch. Can you pass me my phone? I think it's... I left it in the couch. I think it's underneath one of those. I was sitting on that couch. Can you look under the... It's under your ass. No, you don't have to cut this. You just look under one of those. Oh, it's on... I think it's under the cushion. The cushion. Yep. There it is. There's my phone. Can you pass me my phone, Hank? Here, I'll, I'll come get my phone. <laughs> this is All right. Nice. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Here's my new phone. That's your normal phone that you've Here's always my had. Phone. I've always had this phone. Um, on today's part of my take, we have an awesome interview with Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo, legend of the game, Hall of Famer. We're going to talk some March Madness with him. We're going to talk coaching, the war drill, everything with uh, Coach Izzo. We're also going to recap Sweet 16 games. We have... Four teams that have punched their tickets into the Elite Eight. So we're going to talk about that. Maybe also do a little abbreviated baseball preview because it was opening day. We'll give our picks for the World Series. Our full baseball preview will come sometime in June. Uh, and before we get to all of that, we're brought to you by our friends at DraftKings. <laughs> DraftKings, the thrill and excitement of March Mania is here. And DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. Uh, we got some great games coming up on Friday. Gonzaga versus Purdue over under 154. Looking at that over. And North Carolina customers, you lost North Carolina tonight, but you still have Duke and NC State in the tournament. North Carolina listeners, don't forget DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use code TAKE. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code TAKE. The crown is yours with the DraftKings Sportsbook. Go check it out now. Okay, let's go. Welcome to Part in My Take, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. New customers can bet 5 bucks, get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code TAKE. Today is Friday, March 29th, and the R.J. Davis-Caleb Love rivalry game was stopped by R.J. Davis and Caleb Love. So they went a combined 0 for 18 from 3? Oof. Am I reading that right? Yeah, it was the first time ever uh, I saw the stat. It was the first time ever. So Caleb Love 0 for 9 from 3. R.J. Davis 0 for 9 from 3. First time any two players have shot 0 for 9 or worse from 3 on the same day in the NCAA tournament and Arizona and UNC are going home. Yeah, and UNC, I, as big as any of those missed threes, was uh, Baycott's missed dunk. That's why, number one, I don't dunk. Number two, uh, two-handed layup counts the same. Yeah. Same amount of points. That, I mean, that game was incredible. UNC Alabama was incredible. Uh, and it came down to, yeah, Baycott's dunk. But to me, it was more uh, Withers shooting a three with a minute left. I don't know why that guy was shooting that three with 10 seconds left on the shot clock when they were up one with a minute left. And then... Again, it always comes down to this. Like, Baycott was an absolute monster on the boards, and he gets his third foul with, like, 14 minutes left. Hubert Davis pulls him for four or five minutes. And I'm not – like, I think they played about even, but what Baycott was doing on the offensive glass, defensive glass, like, they could not guard him, pick and roll. It just completely changed the complexion of the game. And I don't know why you don't say, hey, look, you're, you're a 10th-year senior – you can stay out there and not foul and just do, you know, still be a positive for us, grabbing up all the boards, running pick and roll. And Bama deserves all the credit, though. Grant Nelson was incredible. Grant Nelson was an absolute force. Love the mustache. Double double. Even had the block at the end of the game with like 0.6 seconds left, the yeah. full court heave. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if he tried to miss that last foul shot. I, I was saying that he should just because, yeah, don't let him set up anything to run a play, uh, even if you're just inbounding it from underneath your own basket. Just let him try to huck it, and then he swatted him. That was a great play by him. Awesome mustache for that guy. Awesome mustache. North Dakota State. Yes. That man, look, he should be on the North Dakota State flag, actually. That should just – he's the new symbol. 
They should build a Mount Rushmore in North Dakota, and it should just be his face. Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Devil's Lake. So Alabama marching on. That was it. Was an incredible game. I mean, this is what we all expected that we'd get some Sweet Sixteen games that were awesome. Clemson beats Arizona. Arizona runs one of the weirdest game plans ever, where like Tommy Lloyd is, I think, a good coach, but then they have these games in the tournament where they were just chucking threes. I don't think they guarded a guy off the ball once all night. Like they were just back cutting. Clemson was back cutting Arizona to death. And then you had on top of all of it, they cut the lead and just like not deciding whether to foul or not. And then having someone leak out and one with like 15 seconds left game over. What did Rick Pitino teach us? The lost art of the bounce pass. Clemson yeah. brought the bounce pass back. They were feeding that dude down low, running that like Princeton backdoor cut. And Arizona didn't even pretend like they wanted to defend it. They yeah. were just like, okay, tell you what, we'll give up two points because we're going to go down court. We're going to shoot a three. Fun fact about the Arizona Wildcats, they have now lost to a team seated at least four spots below them in each of their last six NCAA tournament appearances. That's the longest streak since seeding began in 1979. Damn. Yeah, it does Wild. feel like every year we're like, hey, Arizona, watch out. They're so good. They have all these athletes. Follows a problem. And... Yet again, they're going home earlier than they expected. And Clemson, those Clemson Tigers, PFT. I think Alabama's going to run them out of the gym. It was a, you know what? It was they a, were fucking good. It was, a, it was a cute little win. Cute little win that Clemson had. You ran up against a team that couldn't make a three-point shot. Alabama's going to just score 120 points on you. That was uh, – they were they were running some awesome offense where they're just getting easy looks at the basket. Yeah, no, they're, they're going to continue to do that, I think, against Alabama. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm going to stick to our guns on this podcast. I think they're going to get smoked. I think Clemson – great story. Like how condescending can we be towards Clemson right now? Well, we could say uh, the teams that could win the tournament as of right now, it's Alabama, it's yep. UConn, mm -hmm. it's Illinois – it's Purdue, Gonzaga, Tennessee, Tennessee and Houston, Creighton, Houston, Houston and Duke, and if anyone NC can win, State, basically. Marquette. I would say, but not Clemson. NC State team, Update Destiny, the graphic. Marquette, Shaka Smart, proven winner. I think, uh, I think Clemson. You know, it's a good story they had. Kind of America's sweethearts. Nobody saw it coming. They snuck into the tournament. A lot of people, not us, said they shouldn't be in the tournament. Yep. Um, but I think I think Klotz, clock has struck midnight on the Clemson Tigers. Yeah. Also, um, shout out. There's a big golf tournament this weekend. We had Siwoo Kim Tracker uh, give us an update. Uh, he said, Elite Eight bound, fuck you, PFT commenter, Barstool Big Cat, yep. Philly Mays. Yep. We've made a very powerful <laughs> I fucking enemy. love this track. He's the only tracker that I want to step outside of golf because that is such an aggressive tweet that I just I, – I tip my hat and be like, that made me laugh out loud when I saw it. So, wait, on, on Saturday – when Clemson's playing, is there any chance they play an early game? I would love it if it was like back to back tweets about like oh yeah, Siwoo Kim in the rough off uh, hole number nine. Joe one Gerard under, one under today. Yeah, so Joe right Gerard for three. Yeah, Joe Gerard. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want him to go. I want him to be, be going back and forth between Siwoo Kim updates and Clemson basketball updates. Switching back and forth. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, Clemson. I mean, they were they did run perfect offense tonight, and Arizona is a joke. Yeah. They just so, chucked. What did Arizona end up shooting for three? They was, just kept every every possession. Five of twenty eight. Five of twenty eight. Every possession for Arizona felt like when you, when you're playing in like a, a long, terrible game of pickup, and you're at you know thirteen points, and then you're like, all right, let's just shoot a million threes. When you could have gotten a couple layups, you're like, no, let's just keep chucking threes and try to end it this way. They're playing like they were tired. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. they're like, let's get out of here. Let's just try to win this game. By hitting a bunch of threes that we're not going to hit. Yeah, it was it was a very weird game plan, and their defense stunk tonight. So I I think uh, I think we're at, at the very least we have an elite eight matchup between Alabama and Clemson, where one of the two teams will go to the final four for the first time. Ever. Yeah, and probably yeah. the best football matchup that you can get. Yeah, I'd love to watch that football game on Saturday. Yeah, they should. Yeah, they should. They should just, just replay one of the replay the the Hunter Renfro national championship game. Yeah, in the other uh, in the other bracket. We should talk about UConn and their path of destruction. So here is UConn's last eight tournament games. 24 point, or sorry, nine tournament games now. 24 point win, 15 point win, 23 point win, 28 point win, 13 point win, 17 point win, 39 point win, 17 point win. And the craziest stat of all is UConn has won nine straight tournament games 
Andrew Hurley has recorded a minute in every single one of those games. Yeah, I, I would say maybe a crazier says that UConn has won nine straight tournament games despite the fact that the committee is doing everything That's they true. can to prevent Danny Hurley and his team from moving on. I love Danny Hurley so much. So much he was he he got pissed at his player for hitting a three. Yeah, with a minute left. So about that, I I do have a bone to pick with Danny Hurley. So I'll say something nice about him, and then I'll I'll unleash my gripe. Something nice about Danny Hurley. I think he's right on the money. He said after the game that they need to show his wife on TV more. Yeah. I respectfully agree with Danny Hurley. That I like her necklace. Time. She has a blinged out Husky necklace that looks awesome. I, I did not see her necklace, but I'll try to notice it next time. I agree with Danny Hurley. Again, respectfully. Respectfully. Um, I'd knock it out of the park. Respectfully. With all due respect. All due respect. Knock it out Stan of the park. Van Gundy. Uh, and uh, then, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, the other part is uh, my gripe with him. Let your son shoot. Let yeah. your son take a three. I know yeah. you guys are winning these games by a lot of points, but let Andrew put up a shot with like 60 seconds left. I think he did put up a couple shots against Stetson, I want to say. But yeah, I agree. He's telling, he's on the sidelines being like, be classy, be classy. I get it. The people want Andrew Hurley to make a three. I agree. He, uh, yeah, he went, oh no, he hasn't, he hasn't gotten a shot. He got a he he recorded a foul against Stetson. He has not gotten a shot this tournament, but he got a couple last tournament. I agree. Let yeah. him get a shot. Let him get a shot. Maybe he's doing it because he knows that his son is also going to be an outstanding coach one day. Yeah, and he wants his son to not let his Classy grandson. Way. Yeah, but I feel like I, if you were to ask the uh, the patriarch of the family, like the grandfather, probably wants the grandson to make a shot, right? Yeah, but the dad doesn't. Right. So by instilling these values. And to Andrew Hurley, Danny Hurley is actually preventing his own future happiness watching his grandson make a shot. Right, but in it an is NCAA tournament. Tough game. Hurley love, and UConn is just an absolute monster right now. Is this your worst nightmare, Max? Uh, nah, I mean, because if is they what go back is. to back like this, the way they're going, like that's, that's way already, more impressive yeah. than Nova's two titles. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're. At this point, it doesn't even matter. They're just so far ahead of us in every facet of history, standings in the Big East, future, mm -hmm. present, afterlife, everything. <laughs> they're, I mean, they're, they, they like everyone's, you know, Bitcoin this, shitcoin that. UConn, UConn is UConn. Just they, all they do is just kill teams by a million. We're, we're doing like a Colin Coward bit. UConn is like Apple stock. It is. It's, it's like, like Amazon. It's fucking insane how good they are, and they have an answer for everything. And I don't even think they played like an A plus game tonight. And that was, it was like San Diego State. Uh, it was like ten ten or something. And then you looked up, and it was a nine point lead. And then you looked up, and it was a twenty point lead. And it was like, okay, San Diego State pulled their starters with four minutes left. The the problem is we haven't seen UConn. Like I haven't paid that close attention. I've been watching the scores of UConn games more than I've been watching the actual on court action. They have an answer for everything. They have dudes everywhere. Dudes. They can hit. So they can many play dudes. any style you want to play. They got a monster down low. They got guards that can hit shots. Like they just do everything. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's going to be actually. I I was so I was rooting for Illinois. Not because of Big Ten, but because I wanted to see Illinois versus UConn, which we get now in the Elite Eight. Because if there's only if there's one person who could po possibly stop UConn, it's the way that Terrence Shannon is playing basketball right now. He's unreal. He's out of. It's like he, insane. he needs to make his foul shots, though. Oh, their whole team makes, needs to make their foul shots. That was the fact that Illinois won a Sweet Sixteen game, going 15 for 29 from the free throw line. Like they should have won that game by by 10 points plus. And we we talked about this on Sunday, I think, that the tournament you can't not everyone can be UConn, where it's mm -hmm. like every game you roll out and you're winning by double digits. Some teams are gonna have to survive a B minus game, and that's what it felt like Illinois did tonight. And they, you know, Iowa State's a very tough team, and Illinois like that, Damas and and uh, Terrence Shannon and Coleman Hawkins. I know that UConn's going to be favorites. I know UConn can can probably waste anyone, but this game is going to be so awesome on Saturday. It's going to be great, yeah. And Underwood is coaching his dick off, too. I love him. Yeah. Booty ball. Booty ball. He's coaching doing, yeah, booty he's ball. Throwing his ass into him left and right, left yeah. and right. It's good. It's it's good for the sport. Um, I, did not, uh, I did not know why – is it Otzelberger or Otzelberger? Otzelberger. Otzelberger wears the tight polo shirts. He's like he's he's I, a Wisconsin guy. He's a wrestler, I think. So I I looked it up, and uh, he wears actually a schmedium. 
Oh, okay. he wears a size between small and medium. And the reason why he does it is to emphasize accountability to his team. I like that. Is what he says. It's the best coach talk ever. So he says that uh, the the polo gives me a greater sense of self discipline each day. That I wear the same size and opt for that. It helps me stay as disciplined and as accountable as I need to be our program wearing that shirt. So he wears it so that he can't put on weight. I love it. Which is a smart move. Yeah. And then if that's if that size becomes too small for you, then you know that you fucked up and you weren't accountable. I do the exact opposite and I only wear black sweatshirts. Yeah. I'm being as the least accountable I could be. I like that. In this situation. Uh but yeah, great games. I can't wait for tonight's games. Uh should we do some picks for tonight's game? Should we talk about it? Oh, Hank, what do you got in front of you? I got the Coors Light Ice Luge. Yeah. Glass Slipper. Yeah, there you go. This that looks a, good. A, a PFT commenter idea come to life. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you pour the beer right in there. Oh, I remember that meeting. Yeah, you, that. Do, you do a shoey out of it. Yeah. When, you're, when your Cinderella moves on. You want to do a shoey out of it? Yeah. Shoey. Okay. Maybe we'll do it right before the Izzo interview. Let's do that because it will be the it will be the last thing we do before we kick it to Izzo. Uh, I did one earlier. Uh, very very cold. Turns out ice extremely cold. Yes, the coldest. Well, mm-hmm. well, is it the coldest? Is ice the coldest you can get? No, you can get colder than ice. Can you? Yeah, Coors Light. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's fact. All right, so let's do some picks. Uh, brought to you by our friends at Uber Eats. Big announcement. Did you know that you can get almost almost anything from Uber Eats? And no, I'm not just talking about food from your favorite restaurant. Uber Eats has a full range of delivery capabilities beyond just restaurant food like groceries, convenience, and alcohol. Whether you need ice cream, batteries, highlighters, or paper towels, or maybe all four, Uber Eats can deliver almost, almost anything. Get grocery, alcohol, and everyday essentials in addition to the restaurant food you love. So in other words, get almost, almost anything with Uber Eats. Order now. For alcohol, you must be legal drinking age. Please enjoy responsibly. Product availability varies by region. See app for details. Uh, okay. What do we like? Oh, shit, I don't have my phone. I think I left it in the couch. Can you pass me my phone? I think it's... I left it in the couch. I think it's underneath one of those. I was sitting on that couch. Can you look under the... It's under your ass. No, you don't have to cut this. You just look under one of those. Oh, it's on... I think it's under the cushion. The cushion. Yep. There it is. There's my phone. Can you pass me my phone, Hank? Here, I'll, I'll come get my phone. <laughs> All right. Nice. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Here's my new phone. That's your normal phone that Here's you've my always had. Phone. I've always had this phone. Um, Are you wearing lipstick? No, that's just the hue of my lips. Okay. Uh, so yeah. All right. So let me look up on my normal phone. Uh, what is it for people who are listening? Oh, people are listening. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful pink phone case. I, I always know. been a case guy. I don't know. I've always been a case Safety guy. I've always first. been a pink fa- case guy. I think that this is the height of masculinity, and it screams. If I were to uh, have to lead a locker room, I would. Oh, look, look would at, you guys feel like I'm leading this locker room right now? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, look I, at this. I don't know if I can think. Oh, I don't even it, think that's uh, the right. Case wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. It actually looks like it looks like I bought the wrong one. I bought the wrong one. Watch this. Like, now seems, do I feel like I'm I'm doing I'm leading a locker room? No, it seems like yeah, you're, it does. It seems like you're Bang. very Gen Z. Yeah, no, I bought the wrong. <laughs> I bought the wrong one. It doesn't fit. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, I like the Gonzaga Purdue over one fifty four and a half. Okay, I yeah. love love love. I gave Purdue as my Mega Max uh, lock of the first round that hit easily, and it's been overtaken by Gonzaga money line. Oh, okay. I love love getting, love love. Feeling froggy. Love it. Hank, feeling froggy. Hank is very simple. He sees a plus sign. And he's like, I like that better. Yeah, feeling it's more froggy? money. I love I'm froggy, but what? Why frog? You feeling froggy? I don't know. Yeah, a little sure. froggy. I don't understand the reference, but I don't either. But it, it feels either. sounds good, doesn't it? You feel mm-hmm. a little froggy? Sure, sure. Why don't you leap? Okay, done. I love Tennessee. Love them. Love them. Minus two and a half. Ooh, give me Tennessee. Give me the power T. Okay, it's T season. Okay. Well, uh, you can get almost almost anything at Uber Eats. So go check it out right now. Get grocery, alcohol, everyday essentials in addition to the restaurant food you love. Uber Eats. Almost almost anything. Order now. Um, boys, so we have these games. Wait, Hank, are you going to be Duke Hank? Yeah. Very important question. Yeah. You're going to go all in. I'll be in. Not, not all in. in. Just I don't have tip. any gear. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not all in. But you I'm, don't have any gear? No, I told you. I, 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 when I moved, I got rid of some clothes and I had one Duke sweatshirt and that didn't make the cut. Do you have anything yeah. from like Brooks Brothers? Yeah. 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 Just wear like wear a, a collar, down. wear a yeah. collared shirt and talk down to us. Got any down. loafers? Yeah, I actually have a nice I have a nice super douchey uh white and blue 
pinstriped. Oh, yeah, perfect. you should do that. Yeah. Perfect. And then make everybody want to punch you in the face. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. Very. That's, just exists. That's, yeah. <laughs> just walk in the room. Um, should we talk a little baseball? It is opening day. Let's talk ball. We should talk we're, ball. We're seam heads. We get it. So we want to do some, we'll do our full uh, baseball preview in the coming weeks, but we should probably give our picks for the World Series. Also, I want to say, I'm starting to think maybe Shohei Otani does have a gambling problem. I'm coming back to your side, PF. Yeah, because have you thought more about the fact well, that I, when you do a wire transfer, somebody hits you up and says I, like, hey, you need to authorize this? I was really banking on the forensic accountants, mm -hmm. and I, I still don't really understand what they do. And so when I was thinking about it more, I was like, what if these forensic accountants don't figure it out? So once the forensic accountants <laughs> got involved, did you also consider the fact that, uh, number one, you get you get a text notification or an email from the bank? Yeah, uh, but he might I show he's he might be like have given this guy his fucking account. And then, like, two, have you, have you thought about the fact that to get forensic accountants involved? You have to press charges yeah. against somebody, and, and as of at least yesterday afternoon, yeah. there's no record of any charges being pressed. I will say though, I do think the MLB is just going to sweep it under the rug. Oh, of course they. Yeah, will. that's yeah. it's like it's almost done. I'm telling you, I think it might be done. They're gonna they're gonna reinstate Pete Rose. Yeah, and they'll be like under the new rules, Shohei did very little wrong. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna under our new rules, Shohei is still eligible to play. Um, we should do our first round of Dingers Only draft. Just the first round? That's what we were going to do, right? Take one player. Was it one player a week? Ooh, I, I kind of like doing the whole draft at once. We, we talked about doing one player a week for the first nine weeks of the season. Hmm. I, I feel like that's going to be kind of like the dynasty uh, recap that we did. That Just get it over with it. all at once? Yeah, no, I think that's probably – people are going to be pissed about that. I think we got to just one do pick it. per show. No, yeah, I think we got to just do a dingers only draft. Okay, when when the time comes, fuck, I was we'll gonna, know it. It's gonna take Shohei. For we'll a feel it when it happens. Like we'll feel it being like, oh shit, there's nothing else to talk about. Dingers only time. Yeah, but baseball's back. Juan Soto MVP, Yankees World Series. That was a sick put out from right field yeah, that he was. had. That was yeah, great. Was. Tyler O'Neill, who I didn't even know what team he played for. Uh, our boss Dave texted me this morning. Said he's hit a home run four straight opening days. He hit a home run for his fifth straight opening day. Pretty incredible. Pretty nuts. So, what do we got for World Series picks? I have uh, a future that I put in DraftKings that I liked a lot. First time World Series winner. Okay. So either the Rockies, Brewers, Padres, Mariners, or Rays. Okay, so the, so that's the Rockies. Ed. The Rockies Dimes, lost Dimes by back. sixteen. Diamondbacks had a fourteen run inning. Fourteen run. <laughs> yeah. So Rockies are out. The uh, Rockies have a pitcher who's, I think his ERA is 168 right now. Yeah, who else? Brewers. Out. Pods. Maybe. Pods. Okay. It's going to be the pods. Who else? Mariners. Maybe. Yeah, they get bad luck. Rays. Yeah. yeah. It's pods and rays. Okay. Pods and rays and maybe Mariners. Yeah. Okay. Great sports town. All right, so my um, World Series pick is I'm going to have I won't pick the Cubs. I, they are already they're already zero one, so they might just stink. They got a hole um, to climb out of. I'm gonna say I'm gonna take the Orioles over the Dodgers. Okay, you took half mine. I've been on the Orioles for the last three years, and I'm just gonna stay on the Orioles. You took half mine. They've got good vibes for the Orioles this year. Oh yeah, new owner. By the yeah, way, and the old owner died. That's true. Yeah. Um, did you know that their new owner owns the Magna Carta? I was watching the game today, and they had they had the owner up in the box. They were interviewing him during the game. This dude bought the Magna Carta. Can you explain to Hank what the Magna Carta is for everyone? Yeah, who sure. Hank doesn't understand. So the is. Magna Carta is a document that was signed in England that limits the power of the king. So it was like, That's yeah, we still have a king, but he's not controlling everybody anymore. That was the Declaration of Independence. That, so the owner said the Declaration of the Constitution was based off the Magna Carta. So this is like the OG Declaration uh, of Independence. I'd rather have the Declaration of Independence, Nicolas Cage style. Yeah, this dude this dude is actually national treasure. Yeah. But How yeah. you own that? Does he, I don't know. He's just I, like a very rich Ravel. He's a very, yeah, very rich person who owns everything else. And he's like, you know what I need? The Magna Carta. That feels like something that should be in a museum. It should. Now you sound like Indiana Jones, but yeah. Yeah. It's a Jay-Z song, too. I don't know if, who, who was first. Uh, Jay-Z might be on the hot seat. Next up, Holy Grail. Get both of them? No, that's the name of the song. What? Magna Carta, Holy Grail. No way. Yeah. That's crazy that I just accidentally said that and didn't actually know it. Oh, okay. 
damn, PSV, that's, don't make him feel dumb. It's wild. Sorry, Hank. Oh, but yeah, mean. this motherfucker bought the Magna Carta. Anyways, my pick is uh, the Orioles, and then I'm going to go. You can't. I already took them. I, want, I wanted the Orioles. I already took them. You, you told Hank to go first, and then you went out of you nowhere. Can't, you, you that's can't a, take the them. pattern of the this show is Hank gives his pick, and then I give mine. Sorry, and you so do yours. pick someone else besides you. I pick. have the Baltimore Orioles. Nope. And then I have that's my pick. Then I have the Atlanta Braves. You got to pick someone else besides the Orioles. You can do Rangers again. No. You had the Rangers last year. No. I've had the Orioles for three straight years. Well, I, I, have fucking... the, I have the Orioles. No, that doesn't count. Why not? Find someone else in the AL. Can I get a backup on this? We usually we got to have Hank. No, but we got to have as many. Big cat, teams as you possible. jumped the gun. It is true. You, but you, Hank you hasn't given his pick yet. I did. I gave f- four. No, you had to give an actual pick. You just said a bet you made. All right, pods over. Raise. Okay. Should, you should have said, said Orioles. You yeah, idiot. idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a perfect spot there. God damn it! Do it again, Hank. Pods. Over. Red Sox. No, you idiot. <laughs> Max, what's your pick? Phillies over Orioles. Okay, yeah, so Max pick. has yeah. the Orioles. All right, fine. Max has the Orioles. Jake, what's your pick? Yankees over Braves. Okay. Okay. I'll go uh, Rangers over Dodgers. All right. What All right. You got? I got the... Uh, I got the Orioles over. No, the Braves. you can't. Max has the Orioles now. I got the Orioles over. Come the on, Braves. respect it. We all have got different teams now. Okay. I gave up the Orioles. Okay, all right. I'm gonna go with the Yankees losing. Nope. Jake has the Yankees. No, he can do that. Oh yeah, losing, losing, yeah, yeah. losing. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. I I have the Orioles losing. Okay. to the Braves. Got it. No, he has the Orioles losing. He has Phillies over Orioles. Y- yeah, you, yeah, you can have Orioles winning, you I guess. You no, know, you can't have them losing either. Yeah, you can't have them losing. You can't have the Orioles. Okay, I have a, <laughs> I have a strike. I think there's going to be a strike and nobody's going to win. How about that? No World Series, vacated. I want the Orioles to win now so bad so that Max can get credit for it, even though he has them losing in the World Series. <laughs> All credit to Max. <laughs> that, would, that would actually rock if the Orioles won the World Series. Over Max, the Phillies? And Max had them losing the World Series. <laughs> yeah. If, oh, God <laughs> yeah, damn it. I might yeah. do an exact future. <laughs> Orioles over Phillies. Imagine that. This would be a great clip. All right, what else? Anything else going on in the sports world before uh, we uh, watch Hank try to drink out of this? Yeah, in Major League Baseball, Big Cat and I have decided to fade oh, yeah. the athletics every single game. Yep. So we're putting a unit on the athletics. Every time they play 162 times a year, we're betting against them. Wake up, bet against the athletics, sleep, profit, repeat. That's the strategy. This Minus year. one and a half. Minus one and a half every single game. They might be favored. They were favored for three games last year. They went one and two in those games. Which is, it's so sad to say that out loud. Plus 120 were, tomorrow. Plus 120 Put it tomorrow. In right now. So it, so it hit in day one, so we're up on the year. Um, we hate John Fisher. Fuck the John Fisher. The guy's a piece of shit, and he's ruined the team. He's made them unwatchable as a big fuck you to the Oakland fans. He's trying to move the team to Las Vegas. Vegas doesn't even really want them that bad. Nope. So he's a real piece of shit. He's my new Dan Snyder. I want that guy gone. And if you happen to be a listener in Las Vegas... There is an act right now. It's called. It's a bill that I think they're putting forward called the Schools Over Stadiums Alliance, which is basically the billionaires should pay for their own fucking stadium act. I like this. Um, to try to not give him the three hundred eighty million dollars. I don't know anything about Las Vegas politics or what else is in the bill, uh, but I will endorse voting against giving John Fisher the three hundred eighty million dollar act. I mean, yes. getting three eighty in Vegas can't be hard. You don't think so? No. I think Bruno Mars is probably tough, right? Oh, no, he got 50, right? All he needs to do is go to the Tunnel of Chaos. Yeah. Dana White's got him hooked up in no time. Oh, did you see Sage Steele call him Joe Rogan? Yeah, so we should, tough. for every interview that we have from now on, um, we should just open it up with, what's Joe Rogan's dream? Yeah, what's Joe Rogan's dream? That I My skin crawled. Because we've made mistakes as interviewers, but I don't think we've ever done that. I don't think we've ever accidentally interviewed the wrong person, have we? No. Oh, that one time the guy called up pretending to be Mike Leach. Yep. And that also, uh, Dr. James Andrews, we got completely bamboozled. I thought it was the the <laughs> surgeon. I didn't know it was a professor. Have we ever done sciences. that? I, think? I did remember. I told. I, I asked Rich like Eisen, college basketball player, or something. Randy Moss. I think Boober and Geo. Yeah, they did that, they but they kind of. The yeah, they, they. Yeah, they feel like they did that as a bit. I mean, what about what Rich Eisen did this week? Oh, Rich Eisen yeah. was that was fucked up. He went after DJ Burns. What did he say? He's like, when did you put on all the weight? Oh my God! Rich. And he was like, excuse me, sir. 
Because he's so polite. Like, do you think that we didn't want to ask DJ Burns that? But I would never ask a guy that because I love DJ Burns. DJ Burns is awesome. The vending machine. Yeah, I want him to win. By the way, we we signed an NIL deal with DJ Burns. Yeah, They're sure. awesome shirt. In the store now. Mm-hmm. In the store now. And Jack Golke, who's here, uh, he watched the games with us on uh, on Thursday night. We're going to do a PMT challenge video, which we got to figure out what we're going to do. I think I've got an idea for it. Okay. Want to throw it out there? Well, Hank, Hank told me no. Oh. Why'd Hank tell me no? No, throw it out there. Okay. Oh, the I, tried, you had probably because you tried to steal the Orioles. Uh, we're going we're gonna to play golf with him. Oh. No. What, what's the idea? So the idea, well, Hank doesn't want me to say it. No, I want you to say it. Well, we're going to make the video anyway, so we might as well get everyone excited about the video. Yeah. I think having me, you, and Hank shooting threes on one basket all at the same time while he shoots one person on the other basket. Maybe we could get everybody else involved, too, all of us against Golki. We're going to have a hard time tracking the balls. But I'm down. Have, well, yeah. have one guy under the hoop. Yeah. I think maybe an easier way to do that would be, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I think maybe we do that, but maybe it's like he goes first and he gets a minute, see how many he makes, then we go. So it's a little more, it's less chaotic and we can have people rebounding. Also so that we can watch Golki just get wet from Right. The I, I want to see him shoot. I want to see how wet the man can be. He also says that we need to have he needs to have a closeout, so we should also just do a video of us closing out on him. Yeah. Seeing how many he can hit in our eyes. And his face. Yeah. All right, either way, we're gonna make a great video. Uh all right, Hank, you wanna try it? Yeah. All right, here we go. Hank, 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 Hank. Hank. Also, sorry to Michigan State fans. We didn't realize that you all are trying to get Tom Izzo to wear a suit again. Uh if we had known we would have asked him, but I talked to someone in Michigan State afterwards. And Tom Izzo said, why would I wear a suit? I can dress comfortably. All right, there oh, you go, Hank. Oh. Oh, that's cold. Nice that's word. Good. What was that, an eighth of a beer? Well, it doesn't take a, doesn't take a full beer. but nah, If you hold it sideways. Wait, Max Max has you. He's got you covered. Um, the real, let a real man do this. Let a real man come in. No, he's going to hold it for you. Yeah. Oh, he almost ate shit. Come on, Max. You hold it up. You hold it up. And he's going to go. pour it. Oh, there we go. Wait, let's not stand in front of the camera. Don't stand in front of the camera. Max. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, yeah, I told come you on, Hank. Cold. No, the, the ice is cold. Yeah. Oh, no. Your hands. Oh, like, my God, Hank. This is now. Like, sounds like a five-year-old. You're making a mess of this. The ice, oh, Jesus, oh, Hank. The ice is so cold. Oh, the ice is cold. Yeah, but Max, the ice is cold oh. on my little whips. My whips are freezing. He's sucking it down. Way to go, Hank. Good job. All right. That was not my best effort. Let's kick it to ourselves <laughs> with uh, Tom Izzo. Awesome, awesome interview with Tom Izzo. And we will do a full baseball preview. Maybe we'll have our friend Jared Carabas or someone else come on, talk to us about baseball. We have to get Jeff Passon on. Yeah, I open like invite. He's he's. I like listening to him. Or so. Kirkchin. I just love hearing Kirkchin's yeah. voice. Jeff Passon, come on, pardon my take. We'd love to have you on. Uh, all right, let's kick it to ourselves and Tom Izzo. Before we get to Coach Tom Izzo, we are brought to you by our friends at Coors Light. From day-to-day annoyances to the big stuff life throws your way, it's easy to get worked up. PFT, chill calendar? Chill calendar. Chill calendar, but there's a better way, a chiller way. Turn that canceled concert into a parking lot dance party too cold for an ocean swim. Play volleyball and light a bonfire instead. That's choosing chill, and when you choose chill, reach for a Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, it's as cold as the Rockies. When you choose to rise above it all, choose chill, choose Coors Light, get Coors Light delivered straight to your drawer with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash take. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. What's in the chill, chill calendar? Let me see. I, I think I know what this is, but I want to double check. I'm excited. Dashing Diva Magic Press Bear Collection. It's uh, it's fingernails. Oh! And I think they're pink. I think I'm Mike Caleb Williams. In well, I... I do you I mean, want to he's do my it? quarterback? Yeah. You know, he's not your quarterback yet. Well, he is my quarterback. Not yet. He is. He's mine. Not yet. He's all mine. Uh, let's see. I think they're pink. All right. So go to CoorsLight.com slash take right now. Coors Light, the best beer in the world. Oh, look at that. They're beautiful. They're nice, right? I still haven't gotten my toenails off. So I'm, I'm struggling with that. Maybe I shouldn't add these. Either way, Coors Light, best beer in the world. We're also brought to you by our friends at Top Golf. It's golf. It's not golf. It's Top Golf. If you've never heard of them, they have all the stuff to make them legit golf, like balls, clubs, turf, and even a ball picker up or cart thing. 
but they're very much not golf too. We're talking loud music, giant targets, climate control, bays, and unbeatable food and drinks day or night. There are a lot of big sports moments coming up soon, especially in March if you're into college basketball and baseball. So if you want to catch the games as you play, Top Golf is the place. Since they want everyone to play, they just launched Half Off Golf Monday through Wednesday. When you book in their app, all you have to do is book a Monday through Wednesday in their app, and you'll get half off of the golf. Of course, even uh, they have some rules. Half Off Golf Monday through Wednesday applies to gameplay only. Isn't offered at the Vegas venue. Is only available when you book in their app. For full details on the offer, visit topgolf.com forward slash PMT. Top Golf is the best. Go bring your friends. Go on a date. Go just work on your swing. You can watch games. You can eat. You can do it all at Top Golf. It's golf. It's not golf. It's Top Golf. We love Top Golf. Okay, here he is, Coach Tom Izzo. Okay, we now welcome on a very, very special guest. He is Hall of Fame basketball coach of Michigan State. It is Tom Izzo. Coach, thank you so much for joining us. We got a million questions. Uh, you have been someone on our list that we've wanted to have on the show for a very long time. I guess I'll start here because it is tournament time. Uh, you guys obviously, you know, bounced last weekend, but had, had you know, you have tons of success in the tournament. So I wanted to start with what is it about the tournament that is so different than the regular season from a coaching perspective that has given you all the success you've had in your career? You know, guys, that's, that's a million-dollar question. I don't know why I've had success. I've had success because of good players. I've had success. Because when we started this whole thing out many, many years ago with Mateen Cleaves and Morris Petersons and Jason Rich, you know, that that five year stretch, you know, you were like you guys when you started your show, you know, everybody's all in, you're this and that. And I've been lucky here. I got alums like Magic Johnson and Greg Kelser. I got I got guys like the Vincent brothers. I got guys like Steve Smith, who Sean Respert, those guys kind of caught fire with our group right away. And we started having reunions uh, every year. And, and those reunions brought excitement. And what they did is, you know, Magic was about winning championships. Cleves was about winning championships. You know, Draymond, you know, winning championships. And it just kind of grew. And uh, so now when March comes, I mean, most people think I do nothing until March. And then I coach a little bit in March. This year, I did a lot before March and I did nothing in March. But I, I think that what you do is you realize it's one and done. And when those players call back to our current players and say, you know what month it is, it's March, you know, and it matters. And there's no my bads anymore. And there's no mistakes. So I get a help from a lot of my great alums. And I probably get too much credit for what I do. They deserve the credit for what they do and what they did when they were here. Yeah, no, it's January, February, Izzo. You've heard that nickname before. Don't, don't you wish it was January, February, March, Izzo? Yeah. You know what? <laughs> I like that better. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, I, I think I'm going to try to reinvent that, but I better get off my dead butt and get it done because, uh, you know, I would rather be playing in April. But, um, you know, we've had some good runs. We've, we've had some you know, highs and lows, but, uh, through it all, I think around here, it's important to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Our fans and our alums. Great. That's normal. That's everywhere. But our former players, I think separates us, makes it special the way they call back. I mean, Irvin called when we were playing, um, against North Carolina, you know, he, I got the pool ready for you guys to come out here. We're all set, you know, just win this game. And, and, and I relay those things, or sometimes they'll FaceTime. Uh, we'll do it in a meeting room. It's pretty cool, and it's one of the things that staying at the same place for a long time and having some of those great players. But the players do deserve the credit, guys. I, I, I don't say that humbly. Uh, I say that honestly. But, but okay, so you are being humble, uh, and I appreciate your humbleness. But in terms of the tournament in the coaching X's and O's, there are definitely coaches that are able to get the most out of their team come this time of year and some that fall short. You've always been a most out of your team guy. The The quick turnaround, that's always what I'm curious about. When you have to play a Thursday, then a Saturday, and you're scouting a team that you've never seen before and they play in a different conference, what is it that you do that's so different that has been able to put your team in these situations where they've had success? Because that, I think, is a very difficult, unique aspect of March Madness having to scout a team in 24 hours and be like, all right, we got to roll out and play. I will say that that's 
pretty good of you guys. That That is one thing we have done pretty well here. And the reason we've done it pretty well is my first year in the tournament. We played Eastern Michigan in my first tournament. I think Mateen Cleves and Peterson, those guys that won it were sophomores. I had a good staff, Tom Crane, Brian Gregory, Stan Heath. Stan's been in the pros. Uh, you know, those other two guys have coached at major colleges. And we sat down and said, oh, my God, if we beat Eastern, you know, it was just let's win a game. That's all we wanted to do is win a game. Then I learned the Mike Krzyzewski rule, you got to win the weekend. Yeah. And once you got to win the weekend, because the game isn't good enough anymore, nobody cares if you win one game. Then you got to start preparing ahead of time for the weekend. And what we did that weekend is we went from playing Eastern Michigan to Princeton. And Princeton was really good. And they ran all that backdoor stuff and – it was a hard prep. And I, we said, how are we going to get this through to our guys? So we took these 20 minute segments. And so we got home that night at one o'clock in the morning. I said, we're going to watch 20 minutes of film so that they go to bed dreaming about Princeton. We got up in the morning, we had breakfast. We had like 15 minutes before breakfast, breakfast, 15 minutes after. And we'd have a walkthrough. We'd have 15 minutes of walkthrough. Then we'd have lunch. Then another, you know, so I tried to divide it up knowing that the tension span, especially in this pressure packed time. And I think of all the things we've done, the Princeton game helped kind of my philosophy, our philosophy. And so now we stole something from Mike and Duke. Any weekend we go, we try to win the weekend, which means I got a couple assistants working on the other two teams that we could play and we might not even get there. Right. Yeah. The other thing is, yeah. And this, uh, this uh, 15, 20 minute segments, uh, I think has really helped us. So, yeah, you mentioned coach K. I know that you guys are pretty close. Do you guys, you share everything with each other or are there things where you want to keep some things to yourself and not, not let the other guy know. Man, you know, Mike, he didn't share anything with me. <laughs> I stole what I got. I just, <laughs> I heard him say it one time and stole it, but uh, he's done such a great job. And I look at guys like Nick Saban, you know, who I started with here and, I pick coaches in different professions that I that I do admire, that I do respect, because what we're all trying to be is consistent. Unfortunately, during the regular season this year, guys, we were consistently inconsistent. But what you look for in over my career, I think we've been pretty consistent. Yeah. yeah. I just thought when I heard that from Mike, um, you know, we 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 gotta win the weekend. So yeah. God, it made sense. Yeah. Because after we won our first uh, once we got through that first week and that first year when then North Carolina beat us in the sweet 16, um, you know, after that, it was we went to a final four. Then we won the national champ. Then nobody cared if you won a game in the tournament. All anybody cared is, did you advance? Yeah. So that's where the win the weekend and prepare for the weekend. And some people would say, well, you're preparing for a team that you might play two games from now. You're not putting enough into the game you're playing. Well, we did. But we also prepared for that next, and I think that's how you win the weekend. Who would you say would be the toughest types of teams to prepare for? Well, like a Princeton was very difficult to prepare for. Like if I was playing in this tournament now, Purdue would be a different, harder team to play play for. They got a monster in there. He's not even human. I mean, he's <laughs> guy uh, Zach is he's an incredible size, but he's a very good athlete in that. And uh, and Matt Painter does such a good job of getting them the ball 9,000 different ways that it's a tough prep. A tough prep would be a team like Kentucky in the past when Patino was there and they're pressing the whole game. Mm -hmm. You know, now you don't run into many presses and all of a sudden it happened to us. Florida with Billy Donovan, we didn't run into already any teams that pressed. We play Wisconsin to like a 52-48 game, you know, because – Back then, Dick Bennett, it was slow down, and that, that we had to play that style. Yeah. And then everybody said, well, two days later, you're going to play Florida. And I said, great, we want to go up and down. They pressed the whole game. We attacked it. You know, we beat them 89 to 70 or something, you know. So I think that was another key thing with our teams. We could be versatile. We could play smash mouth. We could play racehorse. Yeah. And I think the best teams I had – could do both and you need that when you get into tournament play and you don't know who you're going to be playing yeah so i i, I went to wisconsin i'm a badger so i've not i i've i've not liked michigan state for a very long time question for you who do you think the the player that you coached was most hated by other teams because i have an answer i have a guy that i hated so much 
that every time I saw him on TV, my blood would boil. <laughs> who do you think oh, that was God. for for like? Who do you think most te- like when you when you came out into an opposing stadium? You're like, oh man, they really hate this guy. Yeah, well, they didn't treat uh, Cleves very good in Madison, but I, I don't think they treated Draymond very good. But uh, that's because you know those were the better players. Uh, I, you know, I had a lot of players that got booed at a lot of places. So give me the answer. Okay. My forward. answer is one, one. So easy. I hated, hated, hated Paul Davis. I hated oh, that yeah. guy. God yeah, damn it. Yeah. Did I hate that guy? You know, Paul was a funny guy. Cause he wasn't, you know, the elitist of elite players, like some of those other guys, but he had that knack around him. Kind of like, uh, not as good, but. Kind of like the kid everybody hates from from Duke. You know? Yeah, wow. Filipowski. Yeah, yeah. Where wow. it's just like oh, something. Back then. Oh, back, back then. then. Yeah, yeah. Leitner um, and and JJ. Leitner. Yeah. Leitner. Yes, Leitner. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Well, you guys are on top of your stuff. <laughs> yeah, I hated Paul Davis, and you're right. It was more about the fact that like he just always had a knack for like the big rebound or the big play, and it's like, God damn it, do I hate this guy? But it makes sports fun. The hate is fun. That's what I, I love about it. You get these rivalries. And well, you... we did have some great rivalries yeah. when Bo was there, and, and Bo did a great job, too, and it was kind of really fun to both be in because, you know, you hate your rivalries, you hate them, and then what hate turns into when it goes long enough is total respect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? It goes to total respect because, I mean, Bo was here, his first trip here, I think, he broke our 54-game home winning streak. Yeah. So all of our people hated Wisconsin, and then we both got so good. And then in '15, we we're both in the Final Four, and we found out when we got to the, to Indianapolis, we were both pulling for each other, you know. And and now I'm I'm friends with Bo. I called him when I went out to California, you know, yeah. because you respect people that challenge you every day if you're really good. You that that's what you need, and and, and they do it the right way in Wisconsin. Greg Gard is a good friend. They're, they've always done it the right way. Yeah, yeah. You don't hate nobody. So you wouldn't hate somebody if they weren't uh, a challenge for you, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like yeah. a sign of respect, and I think a little bit of hate is is actually good in sports. Uh, well, Coach, I I got a tough question to ask you because you've been known as being a fiery guy. You've been uh, called the fifth angriest coach in college basketball. They did a poll. But you're also known as a teddy bear. I read an article about you recently that said that you were actually a teddy bear. So are you a nice guy? Are you a teddy bear? Are you angry? You know, I'm an Italian guy that I wear my emotions on my sleeve. Um, And if you look at some of the antics on TV, it's it's just emotion, you know, and I don't always do it on purpose, but I can see where someone would think I was angry. If you talk to most of my guys, the time I spend with them, how much I care about them, I think I'd be a double teddy bear, you know? But um, what I think the big key is nowadays that we're really all having trouble with is how do you be demanding and tough enough to hold people accountable and yet caring and understanding enough to let them know that you care? Because nobody cares how much you know to you. They know how much you care kind of theory, you know? And I think the only way you do that is spend time so part of me doesn't care what most people outside think. What I care about is the reunions that we have. Does everybody come back? Does everybody call in in March? Does all those things happen? If those things are happening, um, I think I've done it right. But uh, I can see where people, and people take things wrong, you know? I mean, the guy makes the same mistake seven times. What am I going to say? Hey, Johnny, would you please do it right this time? You know, you wouldn't do that with your own kids. Yeah, And uh, sometimes I get accused of that, but I know this, I love my guys. I spent a lot of time with them. They've done a lot for me and I'm probably deserving of being angry sometimes. Yeah. I, I, I've always uh, loved the specific part of your coaching career where if you know, we're, we live in a different day and age now, there'll be like a clip where Tom Izzo reams out a player, Tom Izzo grabs a player. And everyone will flip out and be like, you can't coach like this. And then almost immediately, all of the guys that you coached will come to your defense. And it's like, this this is what this is who we should be listening to. The guys that were with him and know his coaching style, know who he is as a person. And it's like, shut shut the hell up. Like he's he's coaching a certain way. So that has to make you feel great though, when all your guys like always come to your defense almost immediately. Like Draymond, if you if you grab a player, Draymond be like, that's that guy and coach have a relationship that none of you can speak on. That has to feel great. 
even Charles Barkley stuck up for me on one, you know, because <laughs> I, I think, you, you know, yeah, you can't grab players anymore. You can't. Why? You know, I can hug them. Right. I feel good about them. Why can't I grab them if I, if they made the same mistake nine times? If you think that any coach, Nick Saban, who was here with me, uh, you think any coach that I, I guess Pat Riley, that is more, you know, more volatile, John Thompson, um, that they just do that on one or two or three mistakes, you know, some of it, they do it because I know where that kid wants to go. Right. He wants, he wants to win a championship and get to the NBA. And you know what? I do the same thing in school. If, if he wants his degree and he's doing things that make that hard, I'm going to get on him there too. And what I think that I hope I say this right, I'm not phony. Yeah. What yeah. you see is what you get. And they see it from the day they come here. So there's no surprises. Yeah. And and by the way, it has been dialed back a lot because, because our society is so damn soft that like you say, they look you look at you getting mad at a guy, you could even look at him wrong and somebody's saying something nowadays. Yeah. It's so stupid. It's it's ridiculous. It, it's crazy because you are with those guys all the time in your relationship. Like if if all someone random grabs them, it's like, yeah, that's different. But it's like the relationship is there. It's it's built on something. It's completely different than what we're watching in a two second clip. So I yeah, I've always had your back in those situations. Always always stunned me. Now you you love coaching rebounding and your teams are always tough. Have you found that it's harder to instill tough, hard nosed like rebounding your war? Do you still do your war drill where you put them in pads, football pads and helmets and just let them go rebound? Isn't that a great question? <laughs> my, great when, question. When, when my former guys come back, I mean, if you would have saw Mateen Cleaves trying to buckle chin straps on guys that are 6'9 <laughs> that never even knew how to put on a football helmet, you would have laughed. But let me tell you that story. We go to Ohio State. First time all year, I think we had 28, 24 games in a row. We had won the rebound battle. We lose it. A couple of players go off on a couple other players in the locker room. That's not what we do here. And I said, wow, nothing better than a player coach team, right, guys? So yep, yep. I get back, I call Saban. I said, listen, I need 12 sets of football gear to practice tomorrow. <laughs> he goes, huh? I said, can I get them? Yeah, sure. Call my equipment guy. I get them. So last 20 minutes of practice, we're going to do our little wardrobe. So I said, since we're getting soft and we don't want to get anybody hurt, we'll put on football pads. That way you can't get hurt. So we did. And I was mad. I wanted it to be a, they had so much fun <laughs> that it became all we talked about. And then we talked about it for five years later and 10 years later. And so now the guys will say, coach, bring out the football pads. You know, rebound is good. <laughs> I can't do that, man. I'd get sued nowadays. I can't do that anymore. So it's uh, it's a shame, you know, that yeah. because those guys had a riot doing it. Yeah, and nobody got hurt, of course, because you're in full pads, helmets. It was uh, it was one of the great things you get to do. It was a memory making moment, and I'm afraid that our society is getting so screwed up. We don't have as many memory making moments. Yeah, and there were some guys that copied me. There were some guys that called me asking what I do, but. Those same guys call me now when we're not rebounding as well. They say, "Do you do that?" I go, "No, time for other things. I don't want to. I don't want to get killed." You know, the sad part is, back then, you know, of course, we videotaped every practice. Hell, I had to get rid of that video. I said, "Somebody will, somebody will sue me later on." So, and now <laughs> oh, when no. we have reunions, all the players want to see that. That's all they want to talk about. Yeah, so, I'd love to see that fun. film. Yeah, it sounds like yeah, a great time. I kind of want to do it. We should actually do that in the office. Yeah, we the should. Basketball court. Yeah, we should you do guys the rebounding. Have the good drill. helmets and shoulder pads. Yeah. yeah. So, so what's, what? Explain the drill to us so that we can recreate it here. Yeah, there's there's five guys that are right under the basket and five guys around the three point line, and a coach will throw it up. And the two shall meet, you know, and they, <laughs> they hit, find the ball and go rebound it. You know, I, love I, I think it. guys, if there's one thing that has been the hardest part of coaching now, and I think you're, you're seeing this, um, where I give, I give Kelvin Sampson, who, by the way, he sat here. I took his spot. He was a GA for Judd Heathcote and Kelvin is his teams are, might be the toughest teams in, in college mm -hmm. basketball. right? Now. I don't know. You know, He's at Houston, so maybe he's just coming on the scene. Um, I don't know what he does every day, 
but it's hard to make teams tougher because our society is so soft, mm -hmm. you know? And you say, well, that's barbaric or that. They used to say we were a football team on hardwood. I always took that as a compliment. Yeah. You know, that was a great compliment. But the game is getting more physical again because I think they're letting it go more. But players aren't necessarily more physical, except Houston. Yeah. Um, they're the most physical team, I think, in uh, – in the tournament. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you, you mentioned uh, coach Saban and now you guys spent time there together. Did you, did you know when Nick Saban got there? Like this guy, this guy is going to be great. You know, when Nick came here as an assistant, I came here as I say, it was in 87 and, um, and Belichick came here a couple of times to work the camp and it was just, and Nick's house was not far from mine. And, and uh, you know, listening to Belichick, uh, you know, the one time I went over there and, I knew Nick was going to be something good. And then he left to go to the Houston Oilers. Then he went to Toledo and then he went back with Belichick at Cleveland. And then I got the job here. And then six months later, Nick got the head job here. So we reunited and we were here five years together. And uh, did I ever think he'd be what he is? No, no. Is it incredible that what he's done? It is incredible. Um, you can talk about having good players. A lot of people have good players and don't get it done. He is, to me, um, one of the greatest coaches in any sport. And I mean that with respect, admiration, and knowledge. Yeah. You know, I know what I'm talking about. Um, and he was, a, I mean, you talk about demanding. Um, he probably did the opposite as I did. I put football pads on my guys to play. He probably put his guys in jocks and t-shirts and said, now go tackle each other. You know? <laughs> he probably went the opposite. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Let's get you what? toughened up by just hitting each other. With yeah. No yeah. Pads on. Yeah. 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 I got a weird question, coach. Uh, is there a date or maybe even a year that you can remember your voice? Uh, the last time you had your voice fully and it wasn't horse. You know, that's another thing that we should talk about. You know, <laughs> everybody thinks it's yelling at players, right? That's what everybody says. You're yelling at players. The truth is, it's yelling at my wife. No, that's not the truth. <laughs> but the real truth is, usually when it gets in the season, I'm, especially the tournament, I don't sleep at all. You know, you don't sleep much. Why would you sleep? You know, that's for death. You, can, you got a tournament to win. Yeah. And when I don't sleep, my voice goes. I, I swear to God, it's it's not it's not yelling at players. I mean, it's, I get blamed for so many things that aren't true. Now, some of them are true, but... Um, it's not that at all. It's it's when I lose sleep or I don't sleep well, like even now, you don't sleep well. Now, how could you sleep well? You don't know who you got, and who's in the portal and who you're paying and who's going on. But right now, um, it'll start coming back a little bit. I think I got a perpetual uh, horse voice. How's that? Yeah, yeah, it's an all you're a horse voice Hall of Famer. There's like a, it's just it's a, always few, there. a few coaches up on that pedestal. There's, there's you, Doc Rivers. I would actually say Kelvin Sampson. He's, he's yeah. on that list, yeah. too. Yeah. Doc Rivers, I work with Doc in the Goodwill games. I, I love Doc. He's he's great too. So yeah, good yeah, the yeah. Horse Voice Hall of Fame. We're gonna get back to Coach Izzo in a second. He's brought to you by Proper Twelve. Proper Twelve was founded by a true Irishman, Dublin Twelve's own, the notorious Conor McGregor. Make it a proper Amazon Prime time. Grab a bottle of Proper Twelve for the premiere of the new film Roadhouse, starring Conor McGregor. Proper 12 is a rich and smooth blend of golden grain and single malt aged four years in bourbon barrels. Anything else just wouldn't be proper. Crack open a bottle of the original rich and smooth proper number 12 or new crisp and fresh Irish apple. Coach Izzo is also being brought to you by our friends at Visible. Visible is a wireless company with nothing to hide. One line wireless, just $25 a month, taxes and fees included. No hidden fees, no gotchas. Switch now at Visible.com. Rate with service on the Visible plan. For additional terms and network management practices, see Visible.com. Now back to Coach Izzo. So, uh, so Coach, what is it? what is it about Italians that you think makes great basketball coaches? Because there's, there's a lot of them. Like the Big East has been filled with – Italians for as long as I can remember but even still to this day we've got a lot of good Italian coaches what is it about being Italian that makes you a good bass or helps you if you have the background knowledge to be a great basketball coach you know the funny part of that is as you know most Italians are not gifted with height yeah so yep. hell, we should we should be better football coach you know Calipari Patino you know uh Raleigh Massimino you know the, 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 we're all regular normal guys like I think you guys but uh 
I don't know what it is. You know, I, I do think one thing that has helped me and my father did it, but my grandfather did it. You know, when you were an immigrant, like they were coming in, I mean, you were in a working man's world. You know, you just worked your way. You didn't know anything else. You were, my family were working in the mines or working here and there. And so I think work ethic helps you become successful in whatever you decide to do. And I think uh, the Italian guys I know, their fathers or grandfathers were all in that. That doesn't mean other nationalities aren't either. You just asked me a question. That's the only dumb answer I can come up with. <laughs> um, I got a question about one of your former players, Draymond Green, who has gone on to win four titles, been an incredible piece to what the Warriors have done, their dynasty. Uh, how often do you talk to him, and are you ever like – Hey Draymond, maybe don't be as crazy. Like, cause you you obviously were able to keep him less crazy. I've always been of the approach that Draymond, you need one of those guys on your team that plays on the edge, and that every now and then going over the edge is actually not a bad thing because it gives your team that little bit of shit to them that you need to win games. But are you ever? Do you ever have a conversation with him? You're like, hey, listen, you're you're an unbelievable player, but yeah, maybe don't go after everyone all the time. Yeah, a lot of time. <laughs> and and I talked to Steve Kerr and I talked to Bob Meyer, the GM. And, you know, people like myself, in a way, I mean, anybody that is more passionate, sometimes we do go over the edge a little bit, you know. it's uh, But if you ask them would they want to trade them, I don't think they'd ever want to trade them. You know? Right. He... He is one of the all time. I mean, I am the luckiest human being on the planet. You know, I coached Mateen Cleaves and, and I coached Draymond Green. And I did not coach, but he's from here and he's still around a lot in Magic Johnson. And there's a lot of great players, but I'm not sure there's as many great winners. Mm -hmm. Who can take average teams or good teams and be the difference in winning? You know, a lot of people make great plays. How many people make winning plays? Like Draymond's toss back to Steph and that illegal screen he kind of sometimes sets and moves a little bit. Those are winning plays and he didn't even take the shot. Right. And I think that's what's not appreciated. The toughness, the rebounding, that he can guard a LeBron and he can guard a seven footer. You know, Draymond is, do I wish once in a while? Yeah, he probably wishes once in a while I wouldn't be like I am, you know, but um. Would I trade him for the world? No. And by the way, I didn't keep him under wraps. I just, I just, that was back in the day when huddles weren't filmed. Yeah. Because he was still as crazy in those huddles. It's just that nobody got to see him back then, you know? But yeah. No, uh, but I, I I absolutely love him. He's, he's a versatile player. He is, you know, those guys that say they don't care. The only thing he cared about was rebounding. And when he had nine, because he always wanted a double double. He knew he had nine and he'd come to the bench and in the huddle, he'd say, not one of you guys grab the next rebound. I'm getting it. Just cut your guy out. I'm getting it. We're on a free throw situation. I'm getting it. Yeah. And, and I would sit there and say, is that selfish? Hell no. I loved it. I, I thought that was absolutely awesome. And, and that's Draymond, you know, he's, he put winning, he puts winning above scoring, even rebounding assists more than I think any player I've ever coached, you know, it was guys like him or Cleves. They'd come into the locker room, never look at the stat sheet. They just look at the W or the L. Yeah. And people can say that, and not a lot of people that do it. Yeah. Draymond it is, cares, which is nice. Like, you do want a person that cares that deeply about winning on your team. I think it was John Thompson. Big John Thompson said at one point, like, one guy like that on your team, you can win a championship. Two guys like that, you might get fired. Yeah, you know, and I mean, I'm I'm not saying there's times I don't call him and say, Dre, what are we doing, you know? And and once in a while, he'll even agree with me. Not very often, but once in a while. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I, I really, I don't think as good as Steph and Clay and all the other guys, I don't think they would have won the championships without him. No, mm -hmm. definitely not. he just not. does all the little dirty work that makes a difference in the end. And, uh, and for that, uh, I know one thing, if you had eligibility left, I'd take them back. I deal with, you know, there's, there's always going to be an issue or two. And do I wish 
Like, do I wish last night he wouldn't have got thrown out of the game? Yeah, I wish he wouldn't have got thrown out of the game. But I don't know everything that happened in the game either. Mm -hmm. There were some things back in the day that happened with LeBron and that I'm not sure were all Draymond's fault either, you know? But you get an image, it's like being the fifth angriest guy or whatever you call me. Right. You get an image and then it precedes you. And that's not always right either. I also think Draymond, like some nights, he's just like, I want to hit the showers early. That felt like one of those nights. He's like, I'm you good. Know what? <laughs> you know what? I haven't done any of this with you guys yet. I disagree with you. I do not know many nights that he doesn't want to play all 48 minutes. I, I don't know. Last that night last night was like you. four minutes. He was like, I'm done. <laughs> so I, I would agree with you most of the time. But last night I was like, he really just wants to go home. <laughs> my theory is that he wants to, sometimes he wants things to talk about on his podcast so he'll do stuff <laughs> Smart. on the game yeah. and then he'll be like people are going to definitely listen to my podcast tomorrow yeah. if i'm talking about getting kicked out yeah it definitely it's smart guy. He's a businessman. Right. I hope not, but you might be right. So, so, and, and yeah, I, I am a big Draymond fan. I think his basketball IQ is so off the charts that people it like is. they don't realize what he's able to do without actually like the where the spacing and in defensively being like a coach. Who else though have you coached that you would say is underrated that people don't fully realize how talented he was, whether it be actual stats or on the floor being a general for you. Well, Cleves was the best I had. I mean, because he, you know, Irvin Magic said this, great players play great, but elite players make other players play great. And that is the true mark of an elite player to me. Who can make other people around them better than they actually are? Cleves was phenomenal at that. He was very good at that. I mean, Draymond, when he was here, did some of that. I had a kid named Valentine who was yep. pretty good at that. Believe it or not, in a whole different way, a whole different guy, Cassius Winston. I mean, he wouldn't even take a shot for a half. He'd just be making everybody else better. And then I say, I would, okay, can can we win the game now? You know, can you make some shots? And yeah. He did it at a very high level and yet wasn't the gifted athlete. He wasn't six five. He, you know, maybe underappreciated and and then, you know, even a guy like Jason Richardson, believe it or not, who had this gifted athleticism that he was a very humble and, and very uh, caring guy that, I mean, he didn't start his freshman year. And, and that's like un-American not to start a guy that was that good. But uh, it was because of the team we had. And uh, Zach Randolph went through the same thing. And, you know, everybody said this and that about Zach. I absolutely loved having Zach. I mean, he was... He was really good and a, and a really good teammate. And, you know, that's maybe, guys, what we don't judge people on enough. How hard they play, what they do to make others better, and what kind of teammate are they? I would promise you, and I don't know, I don't, I'm not with the organization, but I'm, I'm betting that he's an, um, Draymond's an incredible teammate. You know, he's an incredible teammate that's making a name for himself, Jaron Jackson. Just an incredible yep teammate and good guy and a very good player yeah. yeah uh coach your relationship with the media has been kind of interesting over the years uh on this show i think it was back in 2016 we said at some point the media is going to turn a little bit on tom izzo and you know the, the media it's like a big cycle it's like a pendulum that swings back and forth at some point you're like okay this coach is underrated and then once you start winning enough if you haven't won enough recently they say Tom Izzo is overrated. Now you might be back to being underrated again. So I, I, can you judge yourself? Are you overrated or underrated as a head coach? Well, I think you're always overrated because whether we like it or not, and again, you can say humility, it's not humility. Um, players play the game. You know, players play the game. And and you got to have good players and you got to have a good culture. And so if I was overrated, and so, if I was underrated in something, maybe it, people don't look at the culture you develop. And that takes years. And the culture is what is good. But like I haven't been happy. I wasn't happy with our performance. I said right out where we underachieved this year. And I, I said, why? You know, and I can I can name you seven games that we either led or were right down to the wire on and we lost. And usually you win some of those. This year we didn't. We lost them. If you win if you win half of them, you you win 24 games and you're a four seed and Everybody's happy, you know, but really your team's no better because you only won by a couple of points. And uh, so, you know, I I think I have a good relationship with the media guys most of the time, and I'll tell you why. It was my old boss, Judd Heathcote. And uh, 
uh, with Coach Magic, and and I was a GA on his staff. And it's just my second year here. They were talking about firing Judd, and uh, so I'm I'm reading these articles. That's when I read the paper. I don't do that anymore, but I'm reading these articles. They're talking about firing him, and once a week we had open for the media. And so the media came, watch practice, and after practice, Judd's telling his dirty jokes to him, you know, like he always did. He's got his arm around two guys, and he's walking across. And I'm ticked off. I said, Coach, that guy just ripped you today once you fired. And I said, what are you doing? You know, and my dumbass from the UP, I didn't know, you know, what uh, what was going on. And, and he said, I'm going to tell you something if you want to survive in this profession. Everybody's got mouths to feed and everybody's got a boss to please. He said, those guys do too. Some of them are good guys that just have to do what they have to do because that's the way it is. And so I've always appreciated that. If I don't like something somebody says, most of the time I'll call them and say, hey, you're off base on this. Here's why. They might tell me why they think. What's getting harder, guys, is with Twitter. I mean, let's face it. Everybody's attacking you or anybody in the media. Yeah, you know, they're, they're attacking them on what they should think and say. And then those guys give into it and then they go to us, you know. I, I have practice open once a week too. I, I kept the tradition because I thought that way the media could see. You know, I don't hide nothing. I've never closed my locker room ever, ever, never. So I think they appreciate that, but uh, I appreciate them. I just wish that somehow they could understand what's going on each and every day now because the world has changed a little bit in the last three years. In fact, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I see your perspective. And, and you're talking a little bit about like the NIL era and the portal era of college basketball. Are you going to be in the portal this offseason? I might. I might. You know, uh, my wife tried to go in it. And, uh, <laughs> she realized the buyout would have been too high, so she didn't jump it. But, uh, you know, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you know, what I, I've had feelings about it that I, I don't I don't like it. Um, I, I've said it, especially the uh, – especially the – the portal and um and the reasons why and yet um uh, you know what when in rome do like the romans you know we, we we don't have a choice we we play with the cards we dealt and i've said this on many of shows and i've said it many a times and I'll, i won't say a lot about it because it always gets me in trouble but i will say this at the end of the day the majority of kids players i think are going to lose out now there'll be a few that it works out for, but the majority, I mean, we're going to have over 2000 in the, in the portal. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and guys are now doing it two and three and even four times. Where are they going to have to go back to later on? What go you, 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 you love Wisconsin. Yeah. Would you love Wisconsin? If you went to Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan state and Northwestern, right. In your, four your career, would you love Wisconsin? Um, I don't know. You know, that's yet to be seen, but I, I honestly believe that uh, I think a lot of players are going to make bad decisions and not learn how to fight through sometimes. I mean, if I told you how many guys would have left here after one year in my career, I'd have to count them on 27 hands. Yeah, you know? right. And it's just part of the deal. And now those same guys are my biggest advocates, you know, and had the most fun. So there's always a time to transfer, guys. Every place isn't for everybody. But the way we've made it so easy – I think it's going to be detrimental to the player more than it is the coach and coaches are going to lose their jobs. I mean, I, but that's okay. Cause as some people say, we make a lot of money um, and we do, but we have a lot of responsibility and work a lot of hours too. Yeah. To I, I'm hoping uh, as a diehard fan of college sports, that it's kind of a pendulum swing that, you know, for the longest time, the transfer rules were like bad. They were bad, where kids had to sit out a year and like you could like they they were too restrictive. Then the pendulum is swung where it's too you know there's a little too much so freedom. You have to sit out a year. Yeah. Um. For, remember now, one percent are going to the NBA or NFL. Right. Did you hear me? One percent. That means ninety nine percent of the kids need their degrees. So it is a shame that we're punishing a guy by making him go to school a year and sit out and 
maybe get stronger, maybe get better, maybe get smarter, maybe get ahead academically. And maybe when he's done with four years, he actually graduates because 90 in basketball, I think it's 96% are never going to play again. You know, there's 4% in basketball that can play in Europe and G league and Canada and football there. I guess now there's a new league. So maybe they'll get up 2% of play, but most of those kids are never going to play again. And are we really punishing them by Tell them they got to sit out and get better and get smarter and get their academics on track. And I, I know some guys that sat out for me. I had a kid, Morris Peterson, that would have never been a pro. Yeah. If it wasn't for the fifth year. So I understand, you know, the modern day, I, I agree with you, but there's unintended consequences to a lot of these things. And I'm going to do what they said. I'm done bitching about it. I'm just going to do my job. But I'm just telling you, the majority of kids – aren't going to have a place to go to. Yeah. They transferred three and four times. And and we agree because I actually think the pendulum swung too far where it's now too easy and, and guys are, are, you know, the first time, first moment yeah, like, of hardship, they're like, I'm out. I, there's, I'm hoping that we'll find a balance somewhere in the next few years where we'll kind of level back to a spot where people can have the freedom of movement, but there's also a lot more guys staying, sticking it out. And it's better for the school. It's better for the fans. It's better for the player. Like, I, I do think that there is that middle ground that we hopefully will find. Yeah. Like, I think if a coach leaves, you know, that a player should be able to. I mean, you know, you like to say they go for this school, but, you know, I understand that part. And yet, uh, don't think like some people that coaches can just leave when they want either. I mean, I've had my times when I was offered jobs that I would have cost me seven, eight million dollars to buy out, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's kind of, I don't know. And, and, you know, I, I struggle with that too. When people say, well, coach can leave. Well, like I put in 40 years here, right? Should you be able to do something different than somebody that just started it yesterday? I mean, to me, you should, but, yeah. but I ain't arguing it no more guys. I've yeah. lost that battle. That train has left. And, yeah. Uh, it, you're adapting my job. Yeah. You're adapting. All right. So coach this has been awesome. I have one last question. It's a rowback question. com promo code, take 20% off your first purchase. Q-zips, polos, hoodies, joggers, shorts, rowback.com talking about this tournament. I know we're going to run this tomorrow. So four of the sweet 16 games have already been played, but from your perspective, you played a lot of these teams. You've obviously played Purdue a bunch. You, uh, I think you played Alabama last year. You played Arizona this year, Duke this year. Like, who do you think is the is the is the team that you're looking at? And you're like, this team has everything, and they're they're playing the ball that will get them to the Final Four and, and to cut the nets down. Well, we just played North Carolina too, and uh, I was impressed with some of the pieces they have. Um, and I don't want to be prejudiced to Purdue since they're in the league. But when you got a center and that, that Smith kid has really played well. And then they got shooters like Lawyer and uh, Gillis has become a very good shooter. I have not seen Houston in person. I know Kelvin and I know I, I've seen some of their personnel. And anybody that's as tough as that, I think, has a chance. We played Arizona early. We played Duke early. We played... You know, Illinois is another team that has actually come on. Yeah. But uh, I think Purdue has the best chance because of what happened to them last year. They've got the best rallying point and they've got a player of the year. And to deal with him on a second day is hard. It'll be interesting to see how they do, where they play tonight or tomorrow night, I guess it is. They got Gonzaga tomorrow night, I think. Yep. Um, but, uh, you know, I think if I looked at four or five teams, Carolina's got to be one of them. Um, Arizona's got to be. Purdue's got to be. It sounds like it's just the one seeds. Um, who would be? And UConn. UConn's just been oh, rolling. Oh, yeah. Y- y- UConn, right now, um, from what I've seen, is the best overall team. And it'll be a hell of a battle if it's them and Purdue. And then you, you take uh, – Houston, I mean, they can beat you different ways. They can score a lot of points, or they could beat you 39-35. I swear they can. I mean, they can tighten the screws down. And uh, so those would be the top five or six teams. That doesn't mean a team like Alabama, who shoots 100 threes, might be hot and win a game. Uh, That doesn't mean that Gonzaga and the job Mark Few has done couldn't work out. You know, I don't know. Uh, There's a lot of... There's a, hey, 
Right now, the one thing I do know about this tournament in the last two, three years, flip a coin. Yeah. Something strange is going to happen. Yeah. Probably, mm -hmm. probably teams that you thought would get out of tonight aren't going to get out. Teams that tomorrow night aren't going to get out. And yet, uh, some years it's chalk and everybody gets there. You know, I think one year we're in a final four with three ones and a two. That's odd. You know, we've been a seven and been in the final four. So I don't know, guys. I'm not the expert. I'm not gambling <laughs> on it, but you guys can be. And you, you guys have been great. I appreciate you having me on. I maybe uh, who knows? Maybe we'll do it again as the tournament goes. Since since I have some unfortunate off time right now. Yeah, yeah and we have to have you next time you're in Chicago. We'd love to have you come by the office because we have a full court basketball court. We'd actually would be great if you if you took us through the wardrobe. That's what we should yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. Hey, because you can do can it with do us. That. We'll sign a you waiver. Wanna, yeah, you want you want you'll, you'll sign a waiver. I can I can uh, have the Bears send over some football pads. Yes. We'll, we'll get at it a little bit. My I know my son's a big fan of yours, so I'll I'll make sure that I bring him with me, and we'll do that. And oh, you okay. guys have a great day, a good tournament, and congratulations to your son for the three points. That was an yeah, all time I, moment. I, yeah. That was an all time moment. I mean, that was what I love about college basketball. Like you, you get guys who they do work, and they you know they're with the team, and they're they're putting in work. They're not getting the time. And uh, yeah, that was really cool. We also next year you'll you'll be part of birthday week because you and I share a birthday, and PFT is the day after uh, us. So uh, we'll yeah we'll we'll have you come out and do uh, it would be an all time visual because you can you can run the wardrobe. We're not soft, coach. We're, yeah, we're tough. You we'll see, take, you see I these, love it. I've been blogging <laughs> and, for and, fifteen and, years. And I got calluses. Yeah, yeah, the Badgers, man. You know, after a middle of the year slump there, but they didn't really came on at the end. I thought they were going to make a run, and they run yeah. into the same team that we did the first year. Yeah, JMU, who was pretty good team. Uh, Shout night, out JMU, they were good. Yeah. pretty great team. That's yeah. my that's my team, coach. I refer I held myself back from making a JMU comment. You're a JMU you know, guy. I'm a yeah. JMU guy. Yeah, yeah. it was. Well, uh, well, let me tell you, my nephew was on the staff there. That shows you how dumb I am. I played <laughs> him and got beat. <laughs> so, you know what Thanksgiving meal is going to be like? I'm yeah. going to throw knives at my son, my nephew. <laughs> I love it. I love yeah, it. It was a great game for well, me. Yeah. Well, hey, they, they were good. Yeah. They were really good. Yeah. I mean, everybody thought ours was a fluke until they won about 30 some games. And yep. Now you lost your coach. He went in the portal. Yeah, I know it's tough. It's tough. That's it. That's life as a mid major, though. You yeah. got to, you're, you're a great stepping stone, but being a stepping stone kind of sucks sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, coach, well, guys, yeah. You were great. Thank you Thanks, so coach. much. Hopefully we'll see you in person next year when you're coming through Chicago. Appreciate the time, Coach. Part of my take is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. You're going to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash PMT today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash PMT to get 10% off your first month. Okay. Let's wrap up with some Firefest, Hank. Firefest of the week. I actually have a reverse Firefest. I, I, there's no 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 specific Firefest stick out. An ice fest. An ice fest. Uh, there's a bit of that going around. Just a, a great sign for the spring and summer. It happened twice this week where I've found sunglasses from last summer in old pair of coats. Oh, that's, that's huge. Huge. So Get one one wouldn't be notable, but it happened twice, basically in the same week where I put on like a windbreaker. Reached in the pocket, found a pair of sunglasses I thought was gone forever. That's yeah. great. It is that time of year where you can you go back to like the light windbreakers and you're in like a time portal. You find like a time capsule back to, I guess, early last fall. You realize how young and dumb and stupid you were. So yeah, reverse fire. Effect. There's nothing better than finding sunglasses because you just when you once you once a pair goes away, you're like I'll never see these again. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't know where they went, but you can't remember you know the last time you wore them. My problem with sunglasses too is. I always try to have like two or three pair in rotation. Yep. But then you don't treat them like yep. they're the most important thing. So then you get down to having none. That's what I had three. I knew I lost one. I knew I left one uh, in Nashville after a bachelor party. Like I knew those were gone forever. That was a good bachelor party for you. Good bachelor party for me. Uh, and then the other two, I just didn't know, you know, 
they were lost in the wind, but I was like, fuck, I went from three to zero. How did this happen? Yeah. Yeah. Back up to two. I, I conservatively estimate that I've lost like five thousand dollars worth of sunglasses. <laughs> oh, they're gonna say five thousand pairs. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> if I, well, no, I'm I'm counting in the ones that are free. Like yeah. the ones that are that like from Shady Rays. And by the way, Shady Rays does have a deal where if you lose them, you can get a new pair, which is awesome. Shady Rays but, the best. Yeah, I've probably lost five thousand pairs, but five thousand dollars total worth of sunglasses. Yeah. Just in the last seven years. Yeah. I would I you you I mean I don't know how you do it because I, like I use sunglasses basically just exclusively in my car. Yeah. And having to have them on deck all the time that's fucking tough i find them in very strange places but it has been nice the last couple of years not having to like if i go somewhere for work not having a pair of sunglasses being like shit i have to stop by a store and buy sunglasses yeah 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 uh okay pft your fire fest that's a good reverse fire fest reverse fire fest yeah um my fire fest is last night slash this morning i passed another kidney stone oh it's been a while for that uh i don't I think I've gotten rid of all my stones by now. I, I have to. I know that you had one big cat a few years ago. Yeah. I had, eat on uh, vitamin C. Yeah. Yeah. I had one about two weeks after Big Cat had one, which makes me think that it was something that we were eating or drinking together. Um, they gave it to us. But I had like 13 kidney stones when they did the scan of my kidney. And uh, they were all really small, so they didn't have to like go up there and shoot it with the lasers that they do sometimes. So they're just like, yeah, just so you know, you're going to be pissing out kidney stones for the next, I don't know, six months, a year. But... Um, I had another one. Was it, was it painful or was it just the rock coming out of your penis? And you're like, what the fuck was that? The rock coming out of my penis is not the painful part. Yeah. So the painful part is when it goes from your kidney to your bladder. Right. And that's the really small tube. My my urethra is a, a cavern compared to yeah. that. Do you have a wide cut? I do have a, I have a well, I've got a, <laughs> not a great penis, but I've got a huge urethra. Imagine if that was like, hey, hey, babe, like, yeah, I, it's not it's not long. It's not big. Yeah, but the fucking hole is wide. I've got a massive hole. <laughs> if I I could take a, a close up picture of my penis hole, and people wouldn't know, I'd be like, "Fellas, how many beers?" And dudes would get horny online, not knowing what it was. You have a vagina on the tip of your penis. I'm a docking man's dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that that sucked. But I I woke up this morning. I was sweating, back hurt, the whole thing. Uh, but it's gone now, so I'm happy that it's gone. But I hope it's the last one. But I yeah, I think that's about. A baker's dozen kidney stones pissed through my dick. Yeah, my I mean, mine was was a one off, hopefully knock on wood, because it was when I was in in some bro science and I was like, I think I was trying to fight off COVID with just vitamin C. Mm -hmm. And I took like a bunch of vitamin C tablets and, and the emergency. And then I just started pissing like electric orange. Mm -hmm. And then a rock came out and it hurts so bad. It hurts. It hurts bad. Yeah. yeah. It, but but it's also that's the most relieving part is when it comes out. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, my. My dick's seen some shit. What can I say? My dick's basically been to war. Uh, Thank you for its service. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. So that's my fire fest. I feel I feel like that's a a solid fire fest. Whenever I have one, it's like okay, yeah. I know what I'm going to talk about on Thursday. Yeah, because Jesus, that is painful stuff. Uh, all right, my fire fest is uh, not well. It's not. It is my fire fest, but it's my kids are on spring break, and every morning uh, this week, I've had to explain to them that today is not donut day mm -hmm. because they don't have school, so they automatically assume it's donut day. It's like Pavlov's dog. It really sucks having to break it to them. I it even got worse this morning because my daughter woke up and she's like, "Is it donut day?" And I was like, "No, it's not." She's like, "Is it Halloween?" And I was like, nope. So they're just like thinking like every day that they're not in school, they're like, well, something special has to happen. Is Santa here? Yeah. They were just like, and I'm like, no, I'm sorry to break it to you. It's Thursday. Max, Jake, and I went to Dave and Buster's yesterday. Oh, yeah. Just for fun. Uh, and it was a scene. Yes. It was like the, the most packed club I've ever been in. Yes. Yeah. My wife took my son to the... Uh, children's museum she said it was the craziest scene ever because everyone's on spring break right now yeah children's the aquarium is probably popping off right now popping off but yeah it's been tough having to break it to a four and a half year old and a two and a half year old being like today is not donut day is it's it's sad it breaks my heart every single time in a few years and no I halloween guess, was I, brutal yeah i guess it takes a couple years but what six or seven that's when you start to appreciate weeks off from school right mm -hmm. right because they yeah, like they but yeah kids not, still not, like school yeah. right now but yeah, the no Halloween, and then my son chimed in and was like, "Halloween's next week," and I was like, "God damn it, guys, we got to get on this schedule thing. Like, where we got a ways to go." Yeah, that's a, that's a very funny way to grow up, though. Like every day that I don't have school, I get yeah, donuts. Yeah, right. That's exactly what they assume, or something special has is about to happen. So, yeah. Nope. It's Thursday. Uh, speaking of the aquarium, what the fuck is going on with the pregnant stingray? I don't know. Still hasn't given birth. Oh. That that bitch was RG3's baby. That bitch was never pregnant. Yeah, you see, never. You just pregnant. became a dad. 
Who? Puxatawney Phil. Really? Yeah. The groundhog <laughs> fox? I guess so. I thought it lived in that tree stump all year long. In the list of like animals I'd want to see fuck, I think uh, groundhogs are very low. Oh, I'd say high. Really? I would love to see groundhogs. There's so much fur. It's like two pillows fucking, two throw pillows they've fucking. Got, they've got the cute little buck teeth. They're probably chatting away while, while they do that. Watching a turtle fuck is wild. Yeah, it is. And they scream. Yeah. He welcomed two oh. babies. Two, he had twins? I guess. Wait, Phil? <laughs> yeah. Wait, he had the baby? Or he's a dad. Oh, yeah. They, if he's they, a father. If why, they, if why they the buddy made, pregnant? If they made Phil a woman... <laughs> I'll I'll join everyone who's been red pilled and been like our society's going to shit. You I, can't do that. I guess Phil came early this year. Yeah. God damn it. Okay, so he's got two kids. Yeah, two baby groundhogs. He's how, not gonna get any sleep. He's gonna do a bad job of fucking telling us if it's winter or not. How are they gonna decide which one of his, his kids becomes the next groundhog? I don't know. They gotta fight to the death. Yeah, yeah. It's they the do. first time in 138 years that Phil has had a kid. Yeah. How old is Phil? I don't know. I'm going to send you guys the article. There's got to be multiple fills, yeah. By the way, little correction, even though I don't... I, I, I'll i still stand with my take that Flacco the Owl was a slut. Uh, big time slut. Uh, I guess the pigeon herpes might have been because he was eating pigeons. Yeah, that's uh, that good explanation, right. Flacco. Right. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, eating their cock. Hey, hey, babe, I have no idea where this herpes came from. Must have been... Necrophiliac. Yeah. Yeah, must have... So, wait, he was probably going down on the pigeons. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's eating their cock. So, I, I, I'm i sticking with full-on slut-shaming of Flacco. You were a slut. Nancy that's how you Reagan. got the herpes. That's how your brain got worms. That's how you died. Yeah, very convenient, Flacco. Hot guy. Flacco Phil was... and Phyllis. Bi what? Phyllis is Phil's baby mom. Oh, so he's got Phyllis. I like that. Okay. I sent you guys the article. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna see. Are this. they married? Is it out of wedlock? Oh, there's nothing I like more than when a zoo does a wedding for two of their animals. Yeah, Phil and Phyllis. Those are also the names of uh, retro Phillies mascots. Oh shit! You remember when De Blasio dropped the 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 what is it? A hedgehog? No. I no. Uh, De Blasio. The hedgehog went missing. No, no, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a hedgehog. He dropped it. What? Is, what is Punk's Tony Phil? He's groundhog. A groundhog. He's, he's he leased dropped on it. all Galib. Pull up De Blasio. De Blasio dropped a groundhog on its head and it died like a day later. They got rid of the groundhog. Yeah, no, they, it died. They, they he killed it. it. He just fucking dropped a groundhog. That doesn't get talked about enough. Groundhogs live up to six years in the wild, but Punk's Tony Groundhog Club. I want to be a member of that club. Yeah. Has previously stated Phil's longevity comes from taking a sip of the elixir of life every summer at the Groundhog Picnic. The secret recipe magically gives him seven more years of life. They're just giving him so, ecstasy. Phil Atreides. So, he's, giving, he's giving him Diddy's pink cocaine. Wait, so they're saying that this, this is Dune. Yeah. We've I've never been, seen Dune. We've been told that this is the same Phil for 138 years and that it's a magic groundhog oh. that never dies. They're killing groundhogs left and right. Yeah, wait, boy, get the video. I want to see... The video, he dropped the groundhog and, and then the groundhog died like a day later. You can you can probably just search for videos of it. You I don't know why you had to use Twitter. Okay. I'm Sydney right. Sweeney. Yeah. Probably doing the Sydney Sweeney thing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, this isn't it, Max. Oh, it, oh maybe yeah. it is. Okay, so he's got yeah, look the at groundhog. He, yeah, he just drops it. Oh my god. Dude, you gotta hold it. And then the, the groundhog died. Got a concussion. Was dead. The next day. And then he, yeah, they put it in the blue shed. Fucking de Blasio. What a jerk. All right, that was Groundhog Talk. Find you a podcast that does Groundhog Talk in, in late March. It's just, it's unreal that they're telling us that this Groundhog's been alive for 130 years. Yeah. Shout out the Phillies uh, retro logo. It's a great logo. Great logo. Phil and Phyllis. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about that, Max. Yeah, I don't know about that, Max. I'm, I'm a Mrs. Met man. I don't know about that, Chief. Uh, okay, uh, Jake. Uh, my fire fest, I guess, is a little bit of a reverse, too. It's really a good thing, but in the moment, it's a bad thing. I did my first ever cold plunge last week. Oh, oh how'd it go? I have it on video. It was really, it was did you really, scream? Yeah, of course. First ever cold plunge. How many degrees? Probably about like 46. 46. Go yeah, on in, dude. There's nothing. <laughs> There you go. <gasps> now chilling. How long were you in there for? Three minutes. Wow. That's a long time. Yeah. You're going to be like now Huberman in, in no time. So, yeah, it's it was very hard. But for three, those are the slowest three minutes I've ever had. 
Yeah. So but I did it. Did you feel did you feel like a man when you got out? Yeah, it feels really good when you get out. But that moment of duck of your head, oh boy. Yeah, I of all the people that I thought would be a cold plunge guy, I think Jake was last on my list of people yeah. that I thought yeah. would be doing this. But it's a good get way to just like up. cleanse yeah. out. Uh huh. Yeah. Get that There's, tea up. Yeah. It's been I'm, a busy month. I've so. still not gone to cold plunge world. I've done it a few times. Actually, I've done it once, but that was at a gym, and I don't think it was like fully cold. It was like the cold bath at a gym. It's great for uh for a hangover. Yeah. You go hot, cold, hot, cold, and yeah. then your body is just so confused that it can't be hung over anymore. Yeah. I used to do it before it was cool. Oh, really? Yeah. We used to do when it, it was hot for baseball back in college. Do you guys know I went to a training facility when I was in college, and Biz was also at that training facility at the same same time. Doing like, what for like a month? Who's that worse for? <laughs> uh, definitely biz. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely, def- definitely yeah, biz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a college kid. He was. I remember. I was like, oh yeah, that guy plays in the NHL. And then he was like always cracking jokes and like the yoga and stuff that we had to do. Uh huh. And then it ended up being biz. Yeah, it's crazy. That is crazy. Wild story. <laughs> biz walks into an elite athletic training facility. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm an NHL player. I got to get my body right. And then Max is just there farting two sodas the whole nine yards. <laughs> Max, how many times did you get tagged in that tweet the other day of the guy who was like, whoever's eating a burrito on the plane, we can all smell it? Yeah, I mean, that's all my mentions are for anything. So. <laughs> I, saw, I saw it. I was just like, Max probably got tagged a million times. Is Pug out of the vet? Nope, Pug's still in the vet. Okay. Is he? Is he going to have a cone on next week? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's got, one, he's got one arm shaved. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, numbers. Eight. Forty. Twenty. Three. 77. 18. We dance, Max. We're dancing. Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Love you guys.